Welcome back everybody on YouTube. This is Mr. Right Way on today's video. It is the biggest video I have done to date on this channel and I am so excited. I want to thank everybody out there who've been watching all the videos. We have reached over... It's over 9,000! 9,000? There's no way that could be right! No, not 9,000, but over 10,000 subs on YouTube. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. That is a huge milestone. And thank you from the bottom of my heart, guys. Thank you. I am so blessed. Thank you so much. Now, let's hit the 20, the 30, the 40, the 50, the 60, the 70, over 100,000, and then on to a million because this is our channel. This is for the community. This is for each and every last one of you. Now, like I was saying, on today's video, we got some of the best YouTubers talking about the size matter of your video game collection. That's right, guys. I was at the Southeast Game Exchange. I was at Retro Palooza, and then I called in some favorites for some of my favorite YouTubers, and I wanted to say, hey guys, does size matter of your collection? And this is what they had to say. But before we get to that, if you're not subscribed, please do so. We are going for 100,000 subs, but we got a long way to go. But you know what? We're going to have fun while we get there, guys. And also, make sure you hit the notification bell. That's very important because YouTube is not letting people know that I upload a lot of videos. And I want you guys, I want you to see them. I don't want you to miss them. Oh, and stay to the end because we are announcing the winner of the Video Games Monthly Box Giveaway, guys. And also, I am giving away this with a game in it. This Southeast Game Exchange bag. I'm announcing two winners at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. So stay to the end. Don't fast forward to try to find the winners. It's some really good information here for some amazing YouTubers. Make sure you follow each and every last one of these YouTubers because you know a lot of them, but hey. And also guys, some of the video was shot at conventions, so it was pretty loud, but bear with it because it's some great information here and some great conversations. It's not all of them, but it just, Two or three of them, and I know in the comments sometimes the audio level hasn't been the best, and this is when I didn't have the best audio camera, but we get that fixed now. So please be patient. I'm sorry if the audio is a little bad, but it is manageable. So without further ado, let's get to the conversation, and we talk about the size matter of your collection. Let's go. All right, hi, my knee. Why does your knee hurt? Huh? Your knee hurts why? Yeah, why does your knee hurt? I don't know. I, I think... What do you do? I, Puerto Rican flag. Say to Crystal. Ah. Did someone attack you or something? Yeah, what happened? Somebody... Did someone follow you? Some guy attacked me, so I need to, I need protection. Can you protect me, George? I can protect you. Someone jumped on my back too this morning, but I was strong. I didn't fall over. I was able to hold him up. You know, I don't hey. know if you noticed that. Oh, Man, I, I, already... I don't know if I told you. But you're pretty strong, guys. I got big legs. I really got big legs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only... No, this... Okay, okay. okay let's go. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, wait, wait. In the name of the squad, we want to say thank you for your service. Yes, oh, okay. Thank you. I know I've told you in videos before. Yes. I always appreciate people who say I already you. told you too, but oh, thank you, man. Thank it's you. never enough to say it to you guys. Oh, so. thank you, thank you. All right, let's do this. All right, so what's up, guys? This is Mr. Rightway here. I got my friends, the Pixel Game Squad. We got Mr. Yeah. Oh, you need Oh. He hurt his knee, but we'll talk about that later. And we got Ricky Dawson. No, Rick! Wait, Rip. Mikey. Oh. It's Mikey. That's Mikey. This is Mikey, guys. I'll take it. Whatever. I'm just happy to be alive. Y'all know, you know what? So, on this video series, we're talking about the size matter. What? Yeah, the size matter. Coming from that's experience, if we're talking about what I think, definitely not. That's yeah, real. That's, know. that's we all, real favorite topic. Hey, we all married, so it doesn't matter. Hey! Hey! hey, 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 oh, hey. hey. <laughs> but no. Um, in my case, in yeah. my humble opinion, no. No. Okay. Why? Because I collect, I don't have a so big collection of you guys. Well, not me but, no I, more. <laughs> but I'm a good collect. I, I consider myself a good collector because I collect what I know I'm gonna play. Especially it is rare. Okay. 
I don't know if that makes sense, but it is what it is. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Watch it, man. So for me, I mean, it's crazy. If you would have asked me this like seven years ago, I would have been one of those people that's like, yeah, I mean, the more you have, I mean, uh, so even when I first started, but, but no, it's like the more you have, like, yeah, your collective, like, your collective, like, title is like, oh, I'm the collector. Man. It's, it's real. So when yeah. I first started, actually, Screw Attack, a big company, big old company yeah, back yeah. in the day, reached out to me in our like third episode, and they were like, "You don't have video games behind you." And they said, "Any real collector or collecting a YouTuber or channel yeah. is never going to take you serious unless you have a giant collection behind you." Yeah. So that was always in my head, and that was kind of a thing back then. But now I feel like gaming is always I feel like everyone when we got back into gaming it was like we all got back into video games, games yeah. but now there's so many sub genres and sub categories of collecting that I feel like it's so easy to not necessarily have a giant collection of games or certain things yeah. but you just have such a wide arrangement of cool little things that might make up to you these things that matter and in my opinion if now you're holding a collection whether it's big or small if it's stuff that matters of value to you, that's what, to, in my opinion, makes you a better collector. Mm -hmm. Because you're holding things behind you like this, not necessarily this. No, but this, this right here is, is awesome. And I'm gonna talk about, I love stuff like this. This and is that's amazing. What so another collector might see this and go, you collect cameras? Yeah. You're not a real collector. collector. And, I, and I really hate when somebody says you're not a real collector. And that, what, does that, what does that mean though? Like, what does it mean? Does it like I look at it as insecurity? Like, why do we have to judge collectors by the size of their collection? It, but it's it's weird because they're, it, they're, it, even people that say they don't do it, I will never name names. But I've been to places and homes and people's game rooms. Again, not naming names. We love everybody. Yes, everybody. But they're going. No, no shade. But there's definitely you see some people like it's almost like when they see you, especially as us kind of collecting yeah, channels. Yeah. It's almost like, hey, my name's this. Just so you know, I collect this. I collect this. I have this many of this. I have this many sealed this. And it's like almost like you said, like in insecurity. Insecurity, yeah. yeah. And I know this is more, and I know you kind of see it. On, it's probably one of the reason why you love social media because it's really like. I'm thinking about the same thing too. Like, because social media is so draining when it comes to collecting. Toxic. Toxic is the so, word. It's so toxic. Because, like, I checked my, last night I checked my Facebook and I'm like, that depressed my own like, All this, th these days here have been so refreshing, so fun. And also, too, me rebuilding my collection, I'm looking at the prices and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. do I really want to do that for what? Why? Yeah. Why? You know, because I just sold a lot, like 95% of my that. collection. And yeah, did it hurt for a little while? A little while. But I have peace now. I actually have peace. I like, if like two, three years ago, I would have been the first one here trying to get deals. Gotta get it, gotta, gotta, gotta get it, gotta, 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 well, gotta get it. Well, you got the 360 neon sign yesterday. So you jumped the fence. I mean, I'm sorry, but you snooze, you lose, right? He yeah. had an opportunity to buy a really yeah. nice new Xbox 360. That's I pointed true. it out to him. That's I see true. him a couple of hours later. <laughs> our buddy right here holding it. I'm like, well, we're doing good home. Yeah. So, talking about that, I got a question for you. Okay. Do you feel excited starting your collection again? That's, a, that's one thing we always talk about. Right? Yes and no. I feel excited because uh, of the hunt and to meet other people. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel excited about paying the prices because now I spoil myself because I'm so good at finding other deals. Yeah. And I'm and now I'm like, I can wait. But yeah. you know what? I think it comes with age or time. Yeah. Because now I'm married, you know, uh, we got a kid, uh, just we have homes, we have bills. Oh, and, and, uh -oh. Uh -oh. and we pause the video for one minute. Yeah. Other thing, now since you have more experience, yes. Oops. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's it. More yeah. experience. Well, say more. Y'all got more experience, you know. And I want to say myself a seasoned collector, but I guess I am because I've been like really collecting all of my life since I was like 15, you know. Wow. But I really been having like collections, you know, yeah. like collections. Like, and it's really, I really feel for some people because as I was reading some comments, people were like, man, I couldn't do that. And I was like. Do you know that's really tangible? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can get rid of it and come back, but you need to, like, life happens. I've done it three times. 
I have too. You know, I so lost everything and uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and it's the easy part is finding it. The hard part is paying for it. The hard part is paying. But at least, like you said, yeah. you really love it. Yeah. The hunt is this. Yes. Yeah. Being, Being here, here. If we walked away by nothing this weekend, I'd be like, I had one. I was around a bunch of dorks like yeah. me having fun. And having fun, like the, uh, when you saw earlier, Gabo gave me a really good deal on a, a 3DO. I wasn't looking for a 3DO, but he had it, and that's like you know. I say bro deal, you know, and that's what you do with people. You don't know, bore yeah. them like, I don't need it. Here you go. You can have this. Give me a good price. Don't. Yeah. I, I, I think even did the negotiation. It was John Rick. Yeah, John Rick. I'm Rick not good with that. I don't sell. I give. And I do too. I like giving too. Yeah. So. Well, actually, I'm going to interrupt you. Okay. I don't know if I ever told you guys, <laughs> this guy here, he was the first person that gave me a game as a gift. And oh, really? Ever. Yeah, and he was in Portland. When he first got on the show, yeah. he started becoming people like yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You were the first dude that... Oh, that was at yeah. PGR. Yeah, oh. Dragon Heart for the Saturn. So you oh. see? Good people yeah. right here. Oh, and, and, and then when I saw Tim, I remember... Oh. 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 I remember oh. that, though, when he gave, I gave him that. Like, uh, five minutes later, I found a game for a like, cheap price. I'm like... Wow, karma came back really quick. Oh, it happens. <laughs> but you know, like that's relationships. You know, relationships are important, guys. So we're gonna go to some more people and, and talk about this right here by collecting. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. And guys, thank y'all for being on. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. Right. Thank you so appreciate much. It. Adios, my friend. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Oh, we love you. Other name. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Zach Crystal, and Mr. Rightway asked me to answer the following question. When it comes to your collection, does size matter? Now, that's a tricky question because of course everybody's gonna have a different response, but for me, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because a collection is just that. It's a collection. It's what identifies you, it identifies your interests, it identifies your hobbies, it identifies what you are into as a human being. And that's what I love about collections because each collection is going to be different. It is going to be unique. No one is gonna have the same items in their collection. And every video that you watch will be entirely different. Like for example, my collection. My collection is all about all things gaming, but it's also about all things uh, 90s nostalgia. So you're gonna see a lot of stuff that I had back in the day when I was growing up as a kid in my childhood memories. And I love my collection. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And it is small compared to probably Mr. Rightway's collection, but every item I have has a emotional attachment to it. It is super valuable and it wouldn't be, it can't, it wouldn't be items that I can easily get rid of or I would sell. So that's why I think that it's, it's so different. Every collector is different. There's so many terms. There's many types of collectors. And at the end of the day, just collect what makes you happy, what you enjoy, and just don't, don't worry about so much about what people think or how they're going to critique your collection. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to enjoy it. Nobody else. So make it unique. Make it your own style. Make it your own little treasure cove. And I am going to pass it back to you. I'm here with Dreamcast Guy. Hello. That's, hello. Hey, that's your line, right? Yeah, yeah. What's up, gamers? Dreamcast Guy here. <laughs> hey, we here at Retro Palooza. This guy right here, and when I started YouTube, guys, he helped me out a lot, gave me some great information, but I got a question for you. All right, yeah, yeah. Does size matter of your video game collection? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, good, <laughs> yes. Um, I think it's it's more about rare. To me, when I look at a video game collection, I'd prefer, like, a couple extremely rare, mm -hmm. interesting items with a story, like a stall for Sega Saturn, I think is interesting. Or, yes. You know, Panzer Dragoon Saga, if we're still talking Sega Saturn. Mm -hmm. uh, Seaman on Dreamcast, complete in box. Mm -hmm. I think some people are so obsessed with full sets now like if you're getting uh if you're getting nintendo games you got to get every nintendo game yes. i think it's not about having five thousand games sometimes it's just about having like the 300 that you like the most yes 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 i i really do think about that because like i think as i get older and you know collections go up and down move in and out and different stuff like that and i don't like i said i don't think it's about the size of the collection anymore it's about how do you enjoy your collection? Yes, exactly. And what do you enjoy and what brings you joy? I, I, this is a perfect example. I don't know if you know him, an NES addict. I don't know if you've seen yes, this. Yes, yeah. 
His collection is so amazing. It's like curated NES stuff, but it's beautiful. It's no bigger probably than this wall right here, but yeah. it's so beautiful. It's well, amazing. I, I had a friend who, who would only buy the, the RPGs they beat as a kid, but mm -hmm. they'd buy in every version of Complete in Box. So they like Dragon Quest. They'd yes. Every printing of all the Dragon Quest Complete in Box. And so it's like, even though their item was only like 50, 50 pieces in their uh, collection, mm -hmm. it was a very impressive collection. It's like, yeah, or... You know, those people who do the Zelda, the Zelda purists, yes, want to get yes. every version of I have a friend like that, and, yeah. he, and it's so beautiful. And that's more impressive to me in a way than here's my blank wall of 800 <laughs> PlayStation 2 games you haven't heard of, you know. But I've been there before, you know what, and it's exciting as you, I think it's okay to grow as a collector. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's so fun to grow as a collector, but... To do that because I didn't, you know, did a whole Sega Saturn set in eight months. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, that was impressive as hell, too. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like a thing. I see my wife coming in, come on, everybody. <laughs> but, uh, yes, something in your collection right now. Uh, tell my audience, what do you have in your collection that's like that you love that you that people might not know about? I'm definitely a big fan mm -hmm. of uh. Here's Solar on the Sega Dreamcast. A lot of the aftermarket stuff. <laughs> this is my wife, everybody. Is that Chris? We just did a good amazing panel. <laughs> uh, crashing it. I should crash it. <laughs> and, and a lot of I'm really into to repros right now because I have so many I have so many games that are known about yeah. Chrono Trigger and all, of course all my Final Fantasies that I'm, I'm known for. But I also now I kind of just like getting fan translated Super Nintendo carts and stuff. My thing now kind of is like things that you can't buy at GameStop, that were mm -hmm. never at GameStop, or the things that now I kind of enjoy most in my collection. And if somebody's coming over and I'm showing my collection off, mm -hmm. it's like, here's all the games you know, here's a game you don't. Like showing somebody Clock Tower on the Super Nintendo, but arguably one of the first survival horror games ever, you know? Mm -hmm. That to me is is the stuff that I pride myself on the most now. That's amazing, guys. Well, guys, make sure you follow Dreamcast Guy. You know he's such a great YouTuber. Opinion pieces, uh, news, it's, it's just it's amazing. And also too, guys, you can learn so much from this guy right here. I mean, you see where he started, and look, he started from the bottom, now he's here. That's yeah. what we say. <laughs> <laughs> and he's such a great, great person, great human being, and a great gamer, too. I mean, goodness gracious. I beat a lot of the games. You beat I, a lot of I games. I beat a lot of games. Goodness I, gracious. I it, uh, in 2019, I beat 115 games, I think. So I beat, I beat about 2.2 2. 2 games a week. I know, yeah. I don't know. How, I don't know when I sleep. I don't know when I sleep. Dude, I I haven't beat twenty games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get accomplishment when I when I beat Spider Man Mal Morales. Oh, you're like, Dude, you're I was like, yeah. I, I was like, hold on, and everybody complaining like that game is short. I like not for me. I like, like that was a good weekend. That was a good week. I was like, I was like proud, and everybody like did the reviews like I'm I'm beating it like two months later or something. I'm like. I beat that game 11 times. Sometimes really? if a game's short, I also have that habit where I just run through it a bunch. I, I've beaten uh, Resident Evil Village like 15 times. And my wife, she's, she's about to get ready to beat it. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, I was talking about in there, you're not going to pay me. I'm not going to pay myself to be scared. No, I am not putting money down to be scared. Why? Why should I do that? No. But the game is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But and she's an Xbox guy, uh, Xbox girl. Mm -hmm. She loves Xbox. I love PlayStation. You know, we got mm -hmm. uh, in the family. But she plays the, sh the heck out of that game. And she loves it. I'm like, I'm sitting there. I'm in the room just chilling, working on a video. And I hear this loud scream. I'm like, what's going on? She's playing Resident Evil. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you pay for. That's the experience. Well, guys, man, thank you so much. for. Yeah. Thank you for this interview. And guys, like I said, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Does size matter? I kind of like collections that are all killer, no filler. Yeah. So I'd say I, no. I don't think size matters. And it's, I like the history of collections. I don't care if you have like three games or 3,000. I think if you like playing games, that's all that matters, you know? I kind of like am more interested, though, in how the collector got their collection, right? Like anybody can jump online and just buy a bunch of games. Yeah. Like. Were you economical about it? Did you go thrifting? Did you go hunting? Is it Did you from when you were a kid? Yeah. You know? Those stories are, are pretty cool. That's like the journey. I like hearing collectors' journey more than I do what they have in their collection. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Ding. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does size matter? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I, I get that question a lot, actually, where people ask me, um, how do I start collecting? And I really just tell them, start whatever console you fell in love with. So I fell in love with the N64. That's where I started off with first. Now granted, it's getting a little bit more expensive, but I started buying the games that I used to play that I really enjoyed. And over time, I just started buying a lot more quality games over quantity. 
Because I know there are certain collectors where they buy a lot of fillers to fill the space when they're really not playing all of those games. So it really is more about the quality. That's the best way to put it. So. <laughs> Hi everybody, Retro Ghetto here. Now, does size matter? I think it would be hypocritical for me to sit here in front of my hundreds of video games and tell you that it does not. There's obviously an element of quality over quantity. And for me, it's not just owning the physical media. It's the thrill of the hunt, the chase, and the getting it for the right price. One of the things about having a vast collection for me is that one day when I'm old and bold, bolder, I'm going to have the time to go through this library spend hours playing these games and that's something that I look forward to doing both myself and with my son. So like everything, I'd say yes, size does matter, but you've got to do it the right way. Does size matter? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> I don't think the, the size matters as much as the nostalgia factor. So for instance, I have my NES boxed collection and those are only games that I had growing up. I'm just trying to recollect that and put it on a shelf just to remind me of times growing up. Does size matter? What, yeah. are, we, what are we talking here? <laughs> the size of my game collection? I think you should be collecting the games like that you cherish the most, maybe from your childhood. So that could be a, a small shoebox full of games essentially. But yeah, a lot of times when I see those big game collections behind people, maybe, maybe they're just grabbing it to grab the games and, and have no uh, attachment to it. So if you have a small box of games that you cherish and you played those growing up, I think it's fine. If it's a small collection, it's fine. It works. Uh, not at all. You Size does not matter when it comes to a collection. It can be all about quality. It can be all about what you love. If it's the game that you love the most, that's all you need in that collection. It's not the size, it's what you do with the collection. <laughs> oh! Yeah. She's got it figured out. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I agree with He's these. Like, I, don't know what to say. <laughs> I agree with these guys. I think it's quality over quantity that ultimately matters. Um, I mean, even if you just want to collect for one console, you know. Um, so yeah, I don't think size matters. What's going on? Steve, the Steve. size matter of your collection. You know what? Honestly, I'm downsized. I'm in the whole quality over quantity right now. I mean, you have to at some point when you're collecting, so I would say no, it is not. I absolutely go for the quantity. Um, nice, I like that we both were different on no, that. No, absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I collect what I like. So if a game's awesome, I'm gonna get it. Um, I've moved completely over to the Switch, um, and a lot of my retro stuff, I go for even Everdrives and things to play on the original hardware. It makes sense. Which I enjoy. I still have all my nostalgic titles, though, and that's the important the ones you grew up with. The yep. nostalgic titles, and I got them CIB. Yeah. So, I mean, Freddy's right there, I got Freddy CIB. I'm kind of that fun. way, too. I'm, I'm trying to do that <laughs> yeah. now. Like, all the games I grew up with, I'm trying to get them complete. That's yes. Kinda, that's where I'm at, too. Exactly. I'm like, like, like kind of why I went the, the book route, too, because I can put all the complete stuff in the narrative form, and then... I don't have to own it all. I don't have the space. Yeah. And that's the thing, eventually you run out of space and you go for the cool stuff. For the cool stuff. I didn't buy a game here, I bought a lot of cool stuff. I'm about to buy some more games. More games. I got a question to answer. Yes, sir. The size matter. The size matter. No. I'll be the <laughs> I'll be the game collection. <laughs> a woman will say, and who, the answer hey. is no. <laughs> hey, a woman say quick. No. Yeah, I, I, See guys. I the right, the See right guys. Side. <laughs> See guys, you can all have a small collection. I wouldn't tell no. But no, seriously, the size of your collection doesn't matter. No, not at all. You collect what you love, no matter how small, no matter how big. It's just a matter of showing what you like, what you love. Your collection doesn't have to necessarily be big, small, you know what I mean? Show it off. We want to see it. Be proud of what you collect. Be proud of your collection. And you shouldn't be judged as a collector by the size of your collection, right? Absolutely. Well, then what do you like collecting? I like collecting a lot of Mario stuff, yep. Nintendo related stuff, retro stuff, anything from my childhood back in the 80s, Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, stuff like that. And you know when I get a game that uh, Yoshi uh, Frisbee, I forgot how much you like Mario. So I was like, oh, that was perfect. it was perfect. Yeah, yeah I was like, I freaked out like that. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I got it in the garage. So I'm like, I know somebody's going to like this. Oh, but I'm not really much of a Nintendo collector no more. Yeah. I don't even know what kind of play game no more. I still figuring it, I'm figuring it out, but it's yeah. fun. But this is my girl, Jayla, man, she's so wonderful. She got a great channel, go check her out. Man, just, the information's gonna be right here on the bottom of the third. 
she's great, she's lovable, she's positive female for the community, and she's a gamer and a damn good one, guys. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I'm here with Pat the NS Punk here at Retro Palooza, and we got a question for you, man. Does size matter? Of your collection. No, it makes you crazier <laughs> because it shows you put in a lot more time into the, the craft or the hobby mm -hmm. and it shows that you're spending money on stuff that you really shouldn't be spending money on. No one should be spending money on 35 year old dusty relics. Physical media that's, that's dead and gone and never coming back. The Zoomers don't know what physical media is. But we're holding on to it for dear life, us, us, us nearly boomers. So no, it doesn't make you better. It means you're just nuttier, probably. Just make you nuttier. Yeah. Now, how how does your collection? What does your collection mean to you? You said you've been collecting for how long? I don't know. 96, 97. 97. And you so, started off with what? NES. Really? What a shock, right? I know. Like people don't know why they call you NES punk. You know, <laughs> right? And you could have started off with Sega. You know, hey. Do you have any tips for uh, the viewers out here on my channel by collecting and stuff like that? Don't do it. It's too late. <laughs> it costs way too much money. Uh, Pre-pandemic prices were lower than they've been in years and years. The pandemic gave us lots of free time. You got stimmy money. You got extra unemployment money. Extra expendable income. People spending money on crypto and NFT craziness and retro games. So uh, I guess buy what you like, but have a budget that's my that's my tip there it's not how it used to be even seven eight nine years ago at the yeah. flea market getting good deals or those days are over with tr trade with friends facebook groups mm -hmm. come places like here try to make some trades try to there's yard sales and garage those are still the best place to get deals even better than a flea market but you got to search it out you know go on craigslist not for the typical things you usually do out there but for, for video games, hey, don't tell go after that. I'm a personal business, man. I'm a married man. Don't do that. <laughs> Pat, thank you so much for this. Glad for you to be here on the channel. Thank you so much, man. And that's Very cold. That's COVID, that's COVID fixed bump. We're back, though. Yes. So we're good. We made out before it was fine. My wife was okay with it, though. So. Man, I'm going to tell you the station. Oh, God. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Do it. The size matter of your collection. <laughs> Does it make you a better collector? This is just how you use it, baby. <laughs> how you use the collection that matters. Uh, no, not one bit. And in fact, I would tell anybody right now that's looking to do a huge collection, work on all your killer, no filler. If you don't play it, get it out of there. Here's a trick. Put everything in a box that you're not sure about. Move it over into a room or a closet. Keep it there for three months. If you didn't pull a game out of that collection that you really loved, send it out. Sell it, uh, gain some revenue back so you can build something in your collection that you truly love. That's my advice. That's what I say. Do it. So, no. Smallest collection, doesn't matter. If you love it, that's all that matters. That's all that matters, baby. All right, what's up, guys? I'm here with one half of the Game Chasers. On my series, I want to ask you a question, bro. Mm -hmm. Does size matter of your collection? Oh my God, no. <laughs> I keep telling everybody this, size does not matter. It's 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 the motion of the ocean. Okay. It's how you use it. It's how it's you, how you it. play it, it's how you right? Play it, yeah. uh, it's what it means to you. Okay. Whether you have two games in your shelf or 2,000, that's okay. all that matters. I hate people that, that measure their self-worth and their and, you know, they're trying to use it as like a power move. Yeah, it yeah. Just pathetic. Yeah, it really, especially really like on social power. media. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I like to show off my collection, but it's just like, you know, hey, you know, every, every gamer likes to do that. But I've met some people that's like, you know, they they really have to rub it in your face, and they think they got one over there. Like, I got this rare game or whatever. And in the end, it really doesn't mean anything because you can't really take it with you, though. Nah, nah, nah. I I collect what I like, what I enjoy, what I think I might like if I've never played it before. And, mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. That's why I started collecting. It wasn't to impress anybody. It was just to make you feel yeah, good. Yeah. So I don't. I, I I make these videos just because people seem to enjoy them. They like to see the journey, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I definitely don't feel like I'm. You know, uh, it's the collection shouldn't mean anything to anybody else but you. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's what I. And you could do whatever yeah. you want with your collection. You know, you don't have to hold on to the collection like as many people on the channel have been saying. You know. I, I want when I well, like I said when I sold my collection it wasn't just like oh I'm selling my collection no I had 
games, yes, some games can be an invest. I don't look at games as investing, but it can be when you're in a tight spot. I was in a tight spot, you know, and doing this movie, you was telling me earlier about just different things and stuff. Um, how's the movie going? The movie's going great. Uh, I to the point now where we got a major reshoot uh, for a particular scene. I'm not going to bore Slowly. you with the details, but, okay, okay. Uh, but suffice it to say, we need to kind of reshoot that and mm -hmm. that's going to be next weekend. But you know, all this takes money. We've got to get the, the place, the cinematographer, the lighting, we got to get all the audio, you know, so, yeah, yeah. you know, I, 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 you know, tried to sell a few games here yes, and, and, to, to, to actually fund that. Uh, and to my own personal collection, the things I've been yes, literally yes. had sitting around for the better part of a decade and most of this stuff. How do you and, feel about this? Since you're like one of the like, I guess OGs we would say, yeah. of collecting, and now you're selling some of your stuff, are you like conflicted about it? How do you really feel about that? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's impossible to not be conflicted because when you spend so much time going out mm -hmm. and finding this stuff, and you, you 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 ask a collection that you know I really love going to my game room and seeing all this stuff and knowing that like, especially since my you know I got a three year old, yes, and he's yes. getting older, and I was always waiting for that day where like you can pass he, along. He, well, that, but not so much that now, but just him coming up in the game room and being like, "What's that game? Let's play that one. What's, what's that one?" Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and and being able to share all that stuff. Mm -hmm. you know uh immediately there and, and i can still do that you yes. know most of my favorite all of my favorite stuff mm -hmm. you know i'm not gonna sell yes um but the, the the few high dollar things that uh you know i'm like is this just sitting on the shelf collecting dust mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah how many how many times i'm gonna play buck rogers on on uh, on, on Genesis, probably yeah. probably never anymore. Yes. Uh, so, is it better to sit on the shelf and collect us, or can I take that money and use it to finish a project that I've been absolutely putting my heart and soul in for the last few years? And this right here is so. a statement piece. Is like, would you say this movie is part of your legacy? Yeah, I don't see how it couldn't be. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, and and like I said, games are fun, but at the end. It's just physical, you know, a disc or a cartridge. I mean, the memory's going to get it. I always tell people, I absolutely love going, doing this, making the connections, and just going, the, the thrill of the hunt is the most satisfying part. Yeah, it is absolutely satisfying. Uh, you know, going out and you just don't know what you're going to find. You don't know and, it. And just Your blood be that. boiling. Yeah. And you get, yeah. Well, in, in a way, it's like that, that magic on Christmas where yes. you, you had a... You knew you probably got a Super Nintendo game or a Nintendo game, and mm -hmm. you know because that's all you ever wanted at a certain period in your life when all yeah. that stuff was coming out, and you got know, excitement of well, what is it? And, you know, you kind of in a weird kind of a way. I don't know about you, but I kind of get that vibe when I'm out in the flea market. It's just like you know what's going to be underneath that that you know piece of junk that I left over on that flea market table. Is it going to be like just this game that I've been looking for forever? Mm -hmm. And that's that's part of it. Um, I got that here you know, today. So many times over, and like I was just, I found a Resident Evil 2 toy that I missed out on years ago, and I saw the KB, and the guy had it. I said, and all them feelings just rushed back. I was like, oh my goodness, I found it. I was like, mm -hmm. you, it's like, you, I said, get, not get blind, but you just like, get disoriented, but then you get happy, and there's so many emotions. But yes, yeah. the thrill of the hunt is so satisfying. Yeah, it's, it's definitely better than sitting on eBay and just ordering the stuff. Yeah, it does uh, say it, so much. It, it, it really, you know, it's so funny because this is the first time ever I me mean, doing this. I'm literally just sitting here talking to you. I've ever actually made that uh, particular analogy mm -hmm. of, it, of it almost going to the flea market. It's like waiting on Christmas and, yeah. and opening up a present and you just don't know what's going to be in there. Uh, yeah, no, I, that's that's what I, I really, really enjoyed about the hunt. Mm -hmm. And then being able to, like I said, have that collection in my game room, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that I can uh, just go up there and just kind of lose myself in. Yeah. And that's what I, you know, and, that, and a lot of, obviously all these games that I have, mm -hmm. I haven't played all of them. It's just too many and too little time. Mm -hmm. But I always loved the idea that, I could go up there at any point and just pull something random off the shelf that I don't know what this is about. Let's go take check it out. You know, and I'd go do that. And it, it's, it, it was good times. It is. It's, so it's good, good times. And I can, you know, I, I'm still able to do that. It's just, you know, maybe about 10 to 20% of the stuff that, you know, I had that I'm like, you know what? I'm fine not having that anymore. It yes. means I can complete this. Uh -huh. And, you know, and once the movie's out and the Blu ray's out and all this stuff, yeah. uh, I can. And prices have hopefully dropped. <laughs> <laughs> we can hope. We yeah, can I mean, hope. I've been waiting for that, and I never thought they'd go back to the where it seems like I'm. Oh, it's got to come down at some point. And yeah. It just has. But if they come back down in you know a couple of years, and, and there was something I really, really, really missed, just get it again. Yeah. But at least the movie will be done, and all this you know, and, and I can put that 
Uh, you put that on the shelf, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> put the movie on the shelf. Yeah, put the movie on the shelf. Well, yeah. Hey, man, congratulations on the movie. I want to say personally on yeah. camera, thank you so much for you and Jay for paving the way for guys like me. I know people like uh -huh. Retro Rick and other people that actually go out and like, people can used to do this stuff, especially yeah. it's fun. And I want to say, give your flowers while you're still uh, here. No. I, I, I appreciate it, but you know, without without the you know people watching and supporting, it's like we wouldn't be able to do it anyway. Hey, so people like, love you, man. It's a, it's a community. So. It's a community, and it's good for the community. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. man. Thank you. All right. The Immortal John Hancock here, and I'm answering the question, does the size of a collection matter? I've been collecting a long time. I've seen and met several collectors around the world, and I've seen some amazing things. You know, I remember back in the day on online forums, DigiPress comes to mind, and there was a, there was a subcategory where you could look at people's collections. It was really neat to see all the different types of collectors out there. And even to this day, I'm amazed at what people have assembled. And I personally love the diversity of different types of collections. Some people specialize. Uh, some people go after like the, the worst copy of something. Uh, some people like just collecting the greatest hits. Or some people just like to collect uh, one particular type of game from a particular company. Or other people just jumble it all together and just, you know, thrift, thrift finds. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the size of your collection is. And um, I have a bigger conversation to have with that. So we shouldn't look at other people's collections and judge them, whether it's too big or too small. We want to categorize it. We want to try to, in our mind, try to explain why they do it. And more importantly though, we just need to just be happy with our own collections and celebrate that accomplishment and share it with others if we can or want to um, and stop judging others on the size of their collection. That's the bigger issue that I see is a lot of people um, look at someone's collection and they come up with all these thoughts and, and judgments and, and, and negative things. And I, I think that's the bigger issue and I think that it doesn't matter what size your collection is, just enjoy it, celebrate it, and, and, and look at other collections and appreciate and celebrate with them what they've accomplished. All right, guys, what do you think about that? It is some great information from a lot of YouTubers, great information, but I wanna know what you guys think. Tell me in the comments, does size matter for your video game collection? Big, small, does it make you a better collector? Does it make you like, hey, I got more than you, so I am much better. Or just like, yeah, hey, I like this, I like that, it doesn't matter. Hey, it's no wrong answer. Let's start a conversation down in the comments, guys. Hey, now what you be waiting for? You wanna know who won this, right? All right. And the winner of this bag right here, the Southeast Game Exchange prize pack with the game inside. That's right, it's Curie. 777, I hope I said the name right, but right here down at the bottom, your comment was amazing. Thank you for, so much for coming and watching the panel. It's amazing. Women in retro gaming does matter. And the huge grand prize winner, the first of three winners. We got two more to go. Of the Video Games Monthly Box, of the Video Games Monthly Box is Mr. Mario Lopez. Mario, I'm sending you an email, make sure you respond. You absolutely won this box of games. And I do not know what's inside. I, wanna, I ain't gonna peek in. I'm not gonna peek inside. Wanna know, I'm not gonna peek. But this is yours, brother. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much. And guys, always remember to do it the right way. I'll see you next time. Peace. Here we go. I already got Pac-Man Chase here. What's up, man? You said it wrong. Pac-Man Case. I mean, Cake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, y'all. Try to chase me. I try to chase you. That's fair. I like it. Maybe I should change it. Pac-Man chase in the house. Pac-Man case.